So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hello to everyone. I'm very pleased to be here with you to uh, perform a, a talk about this uh, subject that has been just introduced. So, uh, I'm working uh, currently at the uh, Saint Cyr Military Academy in uh, Brittany at uh, Saint Cyr Quetquidan. Quidan. And uh, there is there a, a research center uh, where I work as a research engineer. So, my um, my presentation will uh, present at first an, an overview of what is uh, military robotics and gradually come to uh, convergence and duality between civilian and military uh, developments. Just to start with, um, a state of the art of uh, the military robotics. So there was a triggering factor that happened uh, a couple of years ago, starting in 2001 and 2003, with the Iraq and Afghan wars, where figures are quite interesting. Uh, we saw a dramatic increase of robots engaged in this uh, operation, the Iraqi Freedom Operation for the US, by the US. In 2004, in Iraq, you had 150 UGVs. Four years after, you have 6,000 UGVs and 6,000 UAVs. And uh, in 2010, 8,000 UGVs have achieved 125,000 missions, mainly against IED, improved explosive devices, as you can see here on this picture. Most of these robots are remotely operated teleoperated. And the leader countries um, uh, providing these robots are the US and Israel. What about France? We are in France. So, so what are supplying uh, the French and land forces these days are EOD robots, uh, the Pagbot from the company iRobot, the Minirogen from the company ECA, which is detection and neutralization robot, the Drogen, which is a, a new AV uh, from Toza and uh, Infotron companies uh, to perform detection for engineers. Um, overall concept, what is uh, military robotics to these days? So I present you a, a definition which is quite large, so I won't go into detail of this definition. What is important are the objectives of uh, this uh, military robotization. At first, mainly, uh, the, it is to enable the soldier to focus on what he has, uh, what he is able to achieve, but only that, and let the robot fulfill some clearly uh, task uh, in support or instead the combatant. For example, contact robotization meets a triple objective. The first one is to improve the protection of the soldier, limiting the exposure to the battlefield dangers. Second one, increase combatant capabilities of, uh, and therefore the operational efficiency of the unit. For example, here, the control area of a unit can be enlarged by the use of robotics to see further away, for example. So point, permit the fulfillment of repetitive and dus, uh, dull tasks. To achieve that, the expected skills for military robots are to progress, to analyze, to report, to adapt, to achieve, and to last on the battlefield. A word about lethal decision. Robots with armament, it is clear that the man has to stay in the loop I will mention it later. You maybe have heard about uh, an armament program, which is uh, Scorpion 2 in French, which aims at uh, transforming the capabilities of the combined arms task forces uh, on the horizon 2025 by increasing the capabilities, of course, of the combat units and also enlarging the battlefield digitalization. digitalization sorry digitalization. The robots which are foreseen are micro and mini UGVs and UAVs. Puppet 
types systems, which is called Pantin in French, versatile or multipurpose robots, tactic robots, so platforms for transport, supply mission, surveillance, contact intelligence, and heavy robots for some specific tasks. That's what is foreseen. Which missions to perform? First one is contact intelligence mission. Observe inside a building, inside a pipe, uh, inside a room, etc. Uh, in, or in order to enhance the information for the uh, platoon or section leader. Second main mission is threat detection. You know this very well. It's to detect and identify uh, uh, mines and explosive ordnance threats and neutralize and destroy them. You can see a picture here. It's a French unit in Afghanistan. Third one, to complement the description capabilities, but you're under human control if there is a decision uh, con concerning destruction. The man is in the loop. An officer gives an order, uh, which is uh, clearly very important for us. Logistic support, in order to lighten the burden of the soldier, which is very heavy these days, a soldier can carry up to 50 kilograms on his shoulders, uh, and of course to perform some logistic support task. Gradually, we will see an increase in functional autonomy, but this will be come uh, gradually. And a word about humanoid uh, robots that we can see here at, uh, at this, uh, uh, this colloquium here. Um, the, the armies are not so interested in humanoid robots, but exoskeleton could be a solution to improve uh, human capabilities. A small uh, kind of uh, simulation here, scenario, where you can see an armored vehicle coming and a driver jumping out to protect the uh, operators who are inside this uh, vehicle. That's just a simulation on my own. That is made on my own. A new EV operator can then uh, uh, launch the UAVs to perform uh, reconnaissance uh, in the nearby uh, area up to a range of 2,000 meters. You can also operators perform your reconnaissance and to operate mules uh, uh, to lighten the, the equipment for the soldier. You can also have uh, fire support operators under control of the operators and EOD operators that we have just mentioned. Uh, we estimate that the range is 600 meters for these operators. Why? Because that's the range of uh, light weapons we have inside the units uh, so far. What characterizes the military world? One key element is that we have severe constraints for specification. The robot should be 100% reliable, functional, whatever the weather conditions and temperature conditions. We also have operational constraints. And here you, you see in blue a parallel we can make with uh, the civilian world. Operational constraints are daytime autonomy for the best. Uh, the robot should not break or accelerate uh, the deployment or the movement of a section or of a unit, and it has to be discreet, discretion. So, same for the police forces. Human constraints. Um, in an ideal world, a, uh, the control should be hands free. I know it's impossible at the moment or very difficult, but in an ideal world. Why? Because the soldier has an arm in his hand, and that's his life is linked to this arm. If, he has, if there is a threat, he has to fire. So another point which is important is that the higher the stress the combatant or the soldier has, the lower the attention must be solicited to control or pilot the robot. 
So effortless and easy control is something which is important. We have environmental constraints such as crossing different types of terrains. Same for agriculture or infrastructure supervising. We see these days a, a constraint with the frequency spectrum. spectrum. Uh, the needs for the military uh, robots is wireless, no cables, no links, but uh, we foresee a situation of the spectrum. So one idea is why not to have a dynamic spectrum reallocation uh, during the mission on frequency bands which are shared both by civilian and military. That's an open question. And also, in the military world, we have to secure communications uh, and parallel with the civilian world is the data privacy. What are the prerequisites for a soldier to uh, control or pilot a robot? At first, he has to know his robot. You have to know your robot for good acceptability and the low empathy. Uh, the robot should, should not be too friendly, as some we can see here. Why? Because the soldier should not endanger his life in saving a robot. If the robot is destroyed and he saves his life, that's, that's good. Uh, educate your robot, too, in order to comply with the rule of engagement. And in case of self-learning process, maybe in the future, in case of self-learning processes, uh, you need to supervise it to know exactly what will happen uh, uh, with your robot. Configure your robot also depending on the mission you want to perform. And then control your robot. It means stay in the loop and do not become dependent of the robot. For this, we need training. All of this is also true for the civilian world, I think, except the empathy. You can be very kind with uh, a civilian robots. It's not the same in my sense for military robots. Some emerging issues um, that I would like to mention. At first, the humanization of the war. It could be more easy to use robots and soldiers on the battlefield in the long term. So we have to be, we have to be careful about that. Ethic issues. So ERF is dealing with this, uh, this uh, at the current time. But uh, it is clear that we need a human decision maker for autonomous armed robots. That's a uh, French Army position. And um, there is today a risk, maybe a risk of confusion between armed drones and surveillance drones. And I would like to mention the work made by Mr. Eric Germain uh, from the DAS Delegation of Affairs Stratégiques about that. We have legal issues, legal accountability resulting from action, robot actions. Who is accountable? That's a legal issue. Is there a specific legal status for autonomous robots? That's the question that has been raised. The answer probably is not. It will be like an animal, but uh, some studies have to be performed. And will there be a specific insurances, uh, specific insurances for robots? Social, uh, sociological issues, surveillance, privacy. Perception of robots by the population. Is it the first robot you have seen, or is it that? Is the enemy brave yeah. if you use robots or not? And technical issues, but I will come back later about that. Duality as a solution. So the proposal come, is uh, to, to introduce duality. And a world about humanity, the, the robots that we can see here. Uh, and uh, and this, the army is no longer uh, the means is called its own. Uh, Therefore, to keep the same operational the, efficiency, the armies are uh, not so interested in troops. humanoid robots. But means more higher could be level a solution equipment. to improve uh, human capabilities. Uh, could be a solution for that. Uh, a small, the fact that uh, a single nation military kind of, uh, market simulation is here, too small, scenario, probably, where you can see a normal vehicle coming, and 
a uh, driver therefore, if civilian technologies to exist, protect it's uh, the, uh, very logical to reuse our them to the military world. Who are inside this uh, vehicle. Today we That's have just a simulation program cycles which uh, are the main on my own. A new AV uh, specifically if you need uh, red then, rapid response uh, uh, to threat uh, launch the UAVs uh, to perform. So we have to shorten uh, this program cycle uh, for in the nearby uh, uh, area light up to a range of 2,000 meters by using on the shelf civilian technology. You can have also Otherwise operators performing citizens. reconnaissance and and a world about to operate mules. what we call the uh, Death Valley. Uh, we still have a problem, the global the problem, which is from the demonstrator or the prototype to so our the product. There is a kind um, of fire Death support Valley operators. It's difficult to under control of the, the operators. Finance and EOD to, operators uh, that we have just mentioned. Secure the, the product, the final uh, product. For example, we estimate that uh, the, the range neuron is 600 meters for the these operators. Why? Because that's the range but of uh, light weapons we have to fly inside the to fly units to, to be uh, adopted so at the horizon 2030. What about in the meantime? What characterizes the military world? So duality is the solution. One key element is that, that we have severe constraints and technology for specification. Technological innovation can be rapidly the adapted by should be one hundred percent reliable companies. Functional uh, we will have an example. Whatever just the after. weather conditions and temperature and conditions. Of course, you may find an interest in we some also have transfer from from the military to civilian usage. And here usages. you see in blue a parallel we can make with uh, the civilian tests, world. So operational constraints. What about innovative concepts? Daytime autonomy for the best. The army. Uh, consumable robots, robots should not break or accelerate in order to uh, the deployment use or robots the for specific mission of, uh, section or and if unit. we are able to reduce price and, and avoid over specifications we will reduce price of the robots so, same for the and police forces human constraints renewal of such um, robots in an ideal world, adaptability, uh, uh, the control on the branches of pilots, the army, infantry, impossible at the moment, or very difficult, whatever. but in an ideal world, you can adapt why? to your robot. Because a soldier has an arm mission in two. And at well, his life, uh, reconnaissance mission is linked to this arm. Or their mission if, has is if there is a threat, he has to fight. For that, we also need modularity. So, uh, another point which is important is to anticipate the, the higher of the stress sensors the combatant or the soldier has, but the lower the attention and software standards must be solicited to control or pilot. Pilot, the robot. Uh, today we have static so sensors. Effortless and easy control is something uh, which is tomorrow important. Tomorrow we'll have mobility of We have uh, environmental constraints such as this crossing different types on the, of field. terrains. Same for agriculture and, uh, or infrastructure. I've already mentioned short and armaments programs. So we see these days. Uh, slides. First one is to start with the parallels between the civilian spectrum. world and the military uh, world. The needs for so the, the military uh, robots is wireless. At first, no dangerous cables, missions, no but uh, we for foresee a situation of the nuclear spectrum. chemical. But so one idea is why not world. to have a dynamic uh, spectrum? We can draw a parallel reallocation between, uh, uh, during the mission on robotics. frequency bands, what is which are shared most by civilian and military surveillance. That's an operation. Surveillance of crowd events, and uh, also inspection of in the military area. We have to secure the communication here. Uh, innovation uh, in parallel with the civilian working uh, data and the robot. Data gathering for agriculture. What are the prerequisites what for transport and convoys to uh, control or pilot a robot? Personal instance first, in terms of carrying heavy loads. He has to know his robot. Exactly. He has to know your robot. Be, uh, an answer for good acceptability Increase and the combatant worker capabilities. Empathy. Uh, so, uh, the robot workers. should not, should not be too friendly. The word as about some we can see here, here. why? Uh, because the public authorities so should not endanger his life. Encourage home in equipment. saving a robot. They can also encourage army equipment. If the there is destroyed, a link, we can we can see save these lives. That's that's, that's good. Good. A political issue. Political decision as the. Minister uh, Arnaud Montebourg educate your robot has, uh, too. in order yesterday. to comply with the rule of engagement and also and super, what is clear for the two of learning process, military is the reorganization of, of the self-military processes or the civilian uh, institutions or organizations to introduce exactly robots what has big impact uh, about uh, with your robot people work Configure together your robots with robots also or depending on the robots. mission you want to and this in a highly competitive environment and then control your robot that we are it able means to promote stay in the loop promote, sorry, uh, and do not become decrease to dependent jobs. of the robot final slide for this we need training common technical challenges 
All of this is non-exhaustive. Also true for the civilian world, I think, listed. except the empathy. Movement on difficult you terrain. Be very Not kind with robots, uh, whatever uh, civilian sense. robots and proposition. <laughs> In my and sense, energetic independence. Miniaturization, motor Some mis emerging miniaturization issues. Miniaturization could be a solution um, <laughs> that I would like to mention. At first, so the humanization kind of, uh, of the war yeah. terrain is quite complex. It could be more day and night easy observations, to use robots and soldiers, motion, and the detection, field, intrusion, the discrimination. So you have to, be the we have to be careful about that. Automatic navigation. With our, issues. with our GPS, so ERF is kind of dealing with in case this, of conflict, uh, GPS will be attacked uh, at, first. at the current time. But it's really uh, counter it is clear that we need a human decision and maker some for that autonomous vision, armed mini robot, sensors or to collect the information that's uh, the engine position. And um, there so is today a risk, maybe a risk of confusion between autonomous decision drones making, and drones. artificial and, uh, we'd intelligence. We'd like to mention the work made by Mr. And Eric also automatic deployment uh, from the DAS delegation of Affairs Strategy. Swarming multiple effects. About that on multiple targets. We have legal By issues, robots. legal accountability Ongoing, resisting uh, from uh, action, uh, robot mentioned. actions. Who is accountable? Multi-platform cooperation, issue. collaborative actions. Is there a specific legal status for autonomous robots? So That's a question spectrum that management that I have mentioned. Answer, mentioned. Probably is not previously. It and be like an animal. Ad hoc networks on the but, field. Uh, some studies have to be performed. And will and there be a specific the, uh, human machine for, interface, specific of course, for robots. mounted reality, common by voice, social, uh, social common by social issues, cognitive interfaces, privacy, is there perception of robots by the population, first of what is could it be the first common technical robot you have seen or is it that? So to conclude, uh, dual is challenges brave? also is one yeah. interesting way to use uh, robots or not, and technical to, issues, to but I will great. come back later um, about that. Duality. Uh, one duality uh, you may be aware of one, so, which, which is, is the carrot change, change uh, which was from 2010 to 2012, uh, with the ANR and DGA. Others to come, I hope, probably. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.